Can you introduce yourself to us? Hi, I'm Hector. And I am the chef and owner of the Pupusa Griddle and Napa Valley Chef Catering Company. And uh, how long have you been cooking professionally? Oh, since 1980. So that's uh, 29 years? Approximately, yes. And of course, I was a, I was a hobby cook too as a kid. And um, so I didn't get into the business until I was about 26, something like that. So what are you making for us here today? Uh-huh. Um, we are making kimchi. These complement our ribs, our short ribs. You know, um, they're not exactly made after the style of uh, of the Calbi rib, but they're more made uh, um, using a French technique uh, that the French employ uh, making duck confit. So I use chicken fat to cook my ribs in and to make them really super tender then and, and they're marinating you know and and spices and then they're uh, and then they're after that then i i throw them into an oriental type test uh taste similar to a teriyaki but spicy and they sit overnight in, in that and then when i serve them i will put the kimchi on top of the ribs to complement the pupusas that i serve with that Okay. What are pupusas? Now, pupusas is a a uh, a stuffed tortilla. Literally means stuffed tortilla in the Nahuatl language, which was the uh, the language of the Aztecans. What is the side dish that traditionally goes with pupusas? Curtido. What's that? Curtido literally means pickled. Okay, and so in this case, it will be a pickled cabbage resembling um, a slaw, and it's a blend of carrots and onions and cabbage oregano and it's made with and it's pickled with uh we using vinegar as opposed to kimchi this is a pickle too right yes but it's a naturally it naturally uh, produces lactic acid through the fermentation process that's going on with the reaction of of um, of the of these peppers and 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 and, and, and the brine that's going on uh, you, and, and then you got uh, lacto, lactobacillus is one of the one of the uh, bacteria that gets that that starts doing its thing. And there's another one I, I can't remember the name of the other bacteria that does the action there, but it's naturally occurring in nature. And uh, and so uh, in about five days or so, um, the lactic acid will have done its, uh, its pickling action on on, on this cabbage. And all the other uh, vegetables that are in here, including daikon and onions and green onions, um, ginger, and we have sesame seed going on in here too as well. Apples. What gave you the idea to replace the or to use kimchi instead of the traditional Salvadoran well, actually, pickle? We we haven't replaced it. What we've done is we've added it to it. So in the particular dish that we're serving this with, which is pupusas with the ribs, we put the kimchi on top of the ribs, but we still put the curtido next to the pupusa. Okay. And it also gets a little tomato, a uh, little, uh, little uh, oregano tomato sauce that it gets with it too as well, served with it. So it's got basically three sauces in there. CIA, which used to be one of my customers back in 07, um, over there at the farmer's market, actually started introducing pupusas in the Greystone restaurant, in upscale restaurant, Throw, showing pupusas out there. So I won't be surprised if many other, uh, because we do get a lot of chefs that go through that market, Cindy Paulson is one of them, um, and many of the other catering uh, people that go through there, uh, a lot of the top chefs walk through that uh, farmer's market. And uh, I won't be surprised to start seeing kimchi on the menu very soon in many of these other restaurants that are going on right now. is acidic product and I want no re- I want as little reaction with anything right and uh, stainless steel actually is the best but since we have so much of it I, I don't have one big enough uh, but stainless steel doesn't react with anything you know and this polycarbonate as opposed to PVC it's a safer bet to use whenever you use any any acid based products okay it's always best to store your stuff in polycarbonate cambros. So then, um, you you rattled off most of the ingredients that you have in here earlier, but I just want to recap and make sure we catch everything. You have um, traditional um, Chinese Napa cabbage, you have uh, ginger, 
green onion, um, I think I said daikon already, um, sesame seeds. You have pepper paste, obviously, in here, but what peppers did you use in your pepper paste? Um, yes, that's a good question. Since I didn't have access to going to some Korean store and getting their traditional pepper mix, I, I had to kind of make my own. It's the Japon pepper you can substitute with a chili arbol. These are the hot little guys, right? Yeah. And, um, and then the other ones, like uh, New Mexico chili pot, the California chili pots, uh, these are, uh, they, they don't have any, hardly any heat, none at all, actually. And, um, and so it's a, it's a combination of those two. And so I, I toast them just slightly in the oven. And then I, uh, I, uh, as you, if you saw me, I, I finished them off in, in the little, uh, coffee grinder to make this mix and there's another ingredient in here that some people might um who are a little bit more familiar with kimchi might not see very often and that is apples yes yeah there's some apple here um it's not much apple actually the basic recipe only calls for a quarter apple and uh you puree puree that guy you may like you said you might even be able to just buy some applesauce and throw it in here um but yeah it's um it adds a little complexity to the sweetness, the sugar and inner course, and the salt. When they were soaking, I used rock salt. I created a, a brine solution. This is like something like a, a 20 to 1 by volume in relation to cups. So the basic recipe is 10 cups of water to half a cup of rock salt. Then now that you've got the kimchi all mixed up here, the got it all stuffed with the peppers. How long do you let this sit before you serve it to the public? At least five days. And then after that, I'll take them out. And, and uh, the night before I serve them, I will take them out and, um, and put them in, um, in, in, a, in a colander. And this will leach out the excess salt out there. You don't bury the kimchi, do you? <laughs> Funny. No, we have the technology today. We can, I just put it in the refrigerator five days where did you get this recipe um actually uh, you referred that to me <laughs> the basic recipe that uh, Hector is using in the video today is made by a lady um who goes by the YouTube nickname of Aries Kitchen and one of the reasons I picked this one is because it is vegetarian um as many of you know who watch our videos or who know anything about Korean food not all kimchi is vegetarian, so I went out of my way and I really wanted to try to find a vegetarian recipe because many people up here in the North Bay are either vegetarian or they abstain from pork and shellfish for religious reasons. So it's just a lot easier to make everybody happy if you use a vegetarian kimchi rather than using a kimchi that uses either salted shrimp or the raw oyster that you see in some restaurants or in some markets as well. So this, that's the basic recipe he's been using here. He did, he did do a little few things differently with it, but the irony is, is that every Korean woman between Chuncheon and Busan has her own recipe for kimchi. So his um, variation on this is certainly not beyond the norm of what you would even see in the old country. But I hope that you have found this video to be informative and maybe a little bit enlightening about how Korean food is slowly but surely making inroads into the heart of American culture. Thank you for watching.